y'all been on me about use in this, about how I need to get more use out of it and try it again, so let's do it. If it doesn't work, I blame you. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm almost embarrassed to be making this video today because we're going to be featuring products from PYT that I've been sleeping on for like over three months. I feel really bad about it because there have been a lot of you out there who I really, really trust your opinion who have been really encouraging me to try, especially their new warm day to night eyeshadow palette. And I ordered it ages ago and I just got around to trying it last night and it blew my mind. <laughs> I feel so stupid for holding out on this for so long. So I'm super, super excited to share this with you guys, as well as a few other products that I picked up from them recently. But I'm going to swatch this against the original No BS palette, which is decidedly more cool toned, but set up the same way. So that maybe if you are having a little bit of trouble deciding which one is right for you, you can make that decision in this video. But without further ado, guys, I just want to get into putting this makeup on my face because I feel like I've made you wait for so long. But let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so I already have all of my base on. I don't have blush or anything on yet, but we're gonna jump straight in on the eyes because I'm really, really excited to. And I'll be honest, guys, the first time that I tried this, the only time that I tried this, as soon as I put this on my eyeballs, I went, wait. Tati who? I know, I know, scandalous, but it's just such a useful warm neutrals palette that I don't know you guys, it might be a little $32, not a dupe necessarily because there are no glitters in here at the caliber of the Tati palette, but if you are more of just like an everyday wearer, I actually genuinely prefer the formula on these to Tati's. Tati's formula is very, very professional. Like, I feel like that's who they're targeting it towards. She was very much just trying to, I feel like, appeal to the makeup artists out there in making a really practical palette that had a lot of different options and colorways and things like that. But I don't reach for it that often because it's actually pretty difficult to use. The formula is really, really stiff. I will reach for it for the glitters and really the, like, the creamy shimmers, but not really the mattes. I'm taking the O2 brush from Wayne Goss and I'm going into this big medium shade right here. PYT does such a good job of making this a really practical setup. They're like, this is going to be your transition shade. We're gonna give you a lot of that. This is gonna be your highlight shade. We're gonna give you a lot of that. Now, highlight shade is subjective. <laughs> not necessarily uh, what I call a like a back me out of trouble, a bailout kind of color. There isn't one of those in here and so I will keep something like my hourglass palette, palette? My hourglass powder handy so that I can like, you know, pull back the eye look if I need to because these do get, they get deep in a hurry. Last night I went with these kind of copper colors. Today I'm going to go with the more red color. So you have like a copper and then a corresponding shimmery copper. You have kind of a pink red and then like a shimmery blush color. And then you have a brown and then this really beautiful warm gold shimmer. But I want you guys to see just how flippin' quick this happens, okay? I'm just gonna go straight in right on my socket. Don't freak out, bear with me. I feel like I'm doing my eyeshadow like I used to when I was in college. Just like, take the dark one, stick it in your socket, outline your eyeball. Yeah, it's actually a good place to start. So when I talk about the formula here, look at how it just kind of continues to blend and blend and blend. Now that's something that I usually gripe about if it just like blends forever and you feel like it never commits, this somehow manages to be pretty saturated in pigment and blendable and doesn't blend away. I feel like that's the kind of, you know, bad thing about melt cosmetics eyeshadows is that they'll blend, but they'll blend away eventually and they'll just get really muddy. Maybe it is the selection of shades in this palette that keeps it from getting muddy. They're all kind of like really in a nice, tight-knit family with one another and so you don't end up kind of contradicting one with another very easily but 
I feel like they do build pretty nicely and they, they, they will max out. You know, you can kind of start building too many mats on top of each other and they just max out instead of just blending forever and ever and ever. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of the transition shade and very casually, this is what I call a casual eyeshadow application, just use that to blend up into the brow bone and that's kind of just a tan color. And you guys, if you watched like my soft glam tutorial or anything, you know, I like to go way outside my actual eyeball kind of hemisphere because it, I don't know, I have a lot of real estate and I have to go and claim it on behalf of my eyes because if I just let my eyes boss me around, I'll just end up with like this teeny tiny little canvas to put stuff on and not much else. So I do, I go ahead and bring it out here practically onto my dang temple. And you know, we bring the eyebrow out to do that as well. So it just kind of makes an illusion. So I am going to dip a slightly smaller brush. That was the Wayne Goss 03. I believe this is the 04. And I'm actually gonna go in with the brown shade here. And these are great because they're pointy. So they do lend themselves super nicely to what I was just doing, kind of building that crease. And I mean, you can just mindlessly blend this. Just do, 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 do. Right on the socket. And I can take something like the transition shade here on that big brush again, and just ever so lightly kind of bring everything together and blend. And I'll clean up around my eyes and everything. And once it gets like eyeliner and mascara and stuff on, it looks totally normal. But I wanna go in with this pink shimmery shade all over my lid. Because the, the pop of these shimmers is actually really, really gorgeous. They're not like these creamy metallics, but they are like, they do pack a punch. And I think that the biggest thing that I like wanted to share with you guys about this palette is just how quickly a dramatic, beautiful, flattering, easy eye look can come together, which is not something that you usually catch me ranting about on my <laughs> channel. I'm usually like, oh, let's just do something really subtle. I don't wanna do a lot of eye look today, but like this made my life more fun. <laughs> I just had a freaking blast with this last night. And I think that these shades are just like really intelligently curated. And that just builds, it's so beautiful. Oh, look at that, look at that, look at it. I know that a lot of you guys <laughs> are eyelash, eyelash, eyeshadow junkies, and you do not get your fix on my channel on most days, but uh, today is your day. Also, one thing that I would like to note about this palette is that it doesn't go super deep either. This is just very edited. We have something very medium, goes kind of light, but not super light, but there's also not a black, you know? I think that this would work so beautifully on deeper skin tones as well. So I wanna show you guys in contrast here, the highlight shade that's in that giant pan that's meant for like your brow bone and stuff, versus one of the like metallic shimmery shades. You can see that the metallic shimmery shade has a big, like just an impact, you know, it really reflects the light. Whereas that highlight is truly a highlight shade. It's meant to just kind of like act as a balancing point, not as like this big bright gold thing. You have a big bright gold thing right here. So I'm gonna take a pencil brush and I'm going to grab a little bit more of that pink pink, red, burgundy, wine, berry, whatever you wanna call it. And just go in here with reckless abandon. A lot of you guys have been, uh, I, I don't know, I've just seen it here and there, like people asking about like a good red shade of eyeshadow. And I'm always like, I don't really know what that would look like. I'm imagining like blood red on my eyes, but this is actually the closest that I've gotten to like a red shade that I think is really, really beautiful and wearable. I'm gonna take the very tip of, is that the one I wanna do? Sure. It's the very tip of that 04 brush, just in the interest of using, you know, as few brushes as possible if I can, dip it into the sparkly pink and blend underneath my eyes with that. We're going for drama, okay? We're going for drama, it's happening and a little bit of the brown on a very tip. 
I'm gonna go just kind of in my little socket underneath there. Little snitchery trick, you know, kind of a little K-beauty thing. And do you see how easy this is? Like how I'm just like picking the color up, painting it on my face. Granted, I look a little bit sick right now <laughs> because I just put a lot of like pink color around my eyes and I don't have anything else on my face, but it will all come together, I promise. Find a flat brush here that's clean. God, all of my flat brushes are a nightmare. <laughs> This one has blue on it. The Wayne Goss brushes are really, really cool though, in the sense that they actually don't insist that you like clean them with a solution very often. They, they really just suggest that you wipe them off. So I'm going in with the highlight shade so that you guys can kind of see what that looks like because it does have a glow to it, but it is decidedly warm. You see that? Probably have to back out of that a little. Cause I really do have to be careful with how much of my brow bone I'm going in with the uh, the medium shade, the matte one now. How much of my brow bone I actually highlight because it can really accentuate how like flat that part of my face is and it's still, you see how it's just kind of like, I don't know, it's making my eye look a little bit too sunken in. I have to like bring the matte out a little bit and up to keep it from just like totally flattening that portion of my face out. Okay, the thing that this really, really needs is like brightening right now. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is go in with my Hourglass. This is just my mainstay powder that does such a good job of like cleaning up around the edges of anything. I'm gonna go all basically around this perimeter. And this just does so much of the work for me in one quick, Little action. And that's gonna prime the canvas too for me to actually put like a highlight on the inner corners and stuff because right now I feel like we need to bring a little bit more light into it. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to use the Thrive Brilliant Eye Brightener on my inner corners and then I'm gonna go over that with the Aether Beauty Pure Diamond Highlighter because it just makes everything freaking pop in the most amazing way. If you're unfamiliar with the Brilliant Eye Brighteners, they're a cream, but they're dimethicone based. And so they go on like a powder and they're crazy lightweight and they blend with just about anything, but they also have enough creaminess <laughs> that something can stick on top of them a little bit. So I cleaned off that little pencil brush and gonna dibbity dab and get that crazy flash of brightness right on my inner corner there. Right up here. Told you we were going for it. This highlighter is great. It's insane. This is one of the coolest highlighters ever, but I don't blame anybody who says that it also works nicely as an eyeshadow because it really does like pack that level of brightening. So I'm just putting a little bit of that kind of on the lash line coming out of the, uh, the inner corner. Kind of one of my favorite little tricks is to like put that bright glint right there on the inside of the, like the lash line. Makes everything look like it's coming forward a little bit. And you can see what that did was like it added so much dimension. Everything was a little bit too flat and now it's like we brought the light back out of it. So I'm going to do my bronzer and my contour and everything. Okay, so the blush that I have here from PYT is in the shade Hustle. And this is a different formula than the one that I always swear by, which is Exhale. Exhale is a very cool toned matte lavender and it's so ultra beautiful. I use it absolutely all the time to pull back any look. I'll probably use it today, but this is the shade Hustle and it's a really pretty rosy color that also happens to be a little bit sparkly, just a little bit. So I'm going to use, what am I gonna use? I guess I'll go with that same brush and just kinda dab that. It is pretty pigmented. It's kind of a berry color once it gets on the skin. It doesn't look like that. I don't know, berry, is that the word? I guess it's just rosy. It's just a little bit deep for me and also a little bit shimmery. But the beauty of all of that is that when I come back in, I can kind of touch up with a matte translucent powder like the Hourglass and I lean on that really hard and it'll bring everything back down to earth without putting too much more makeup on my face. I'm just one of those people I don't like having every inch of my face kind of like giving me reflective vibes. There are people who can pull that off and then they'll put on a glossy lip and everything like that. I like to kind of 
balance the textures on my face and especially being as pale as I am, I can get overwhelmed with pigment and shine really fast. <laughs> I really, really like that blush. I do kind of want to go in with a little bit of the matte blush that we were just discussing. Look at how that brings it down to earth. Boom. Versus that. That looks muddy. That looks intentional. Isn't that crazy? This, oh, this blush, the exhale shade was just such a discovery. I think I was hoping for uh, Hustle to be, you know, very similar to it, but it's not quite the same. It's okay. I'm still going to use it. It serves a beautiful purpose Ow. in my routine, but it's not the same. All right, little highlight here from Cover FX, and I'm going to give this a little spritz. Let that live for a second. I'm going to be right back. I'm going to put on some mascara and some eyeliner and finish my brows, and then we will come back and talk about lips and do a full reveal here. So I'll be right back. Do you see this? <laughs> Do you see this, guys? This is why I'm saying that it is like the Tati palette light. It has a lot better chance of being pulled out on an everyday basis in my collection than the Tati palette, though, just because it comes together so quickly and easily. I feel like it is a foolproof formula. It is very, very beginner friendly. So yeah, I feel so freaking pretty. And you guys saw me. I was able to put together like cohesive sentences while it was happening, which means it had to have been pretty mindless. So let's go in with lips last, fast, fast, fast and foremost. And, uh, and then I will go ahead and swatch uh, the palettes next to each other real quick. Oh, well, there's one. It's not the one I was looking for, but it's the Patrick Ta in Sheath Proud. And we'll use that because the, um, the lip gloss that literally me and Nisi Pisa are the only ones that would be excited about this. It's a clear gloss with glitter and it's minty, so it's going to plump my lips. This is actually uh, a really good choice for lip liner in this because it's super warm. Done. I think I've only used this like once or twice. I do love the little applicator. This is the shade. Oh, well, <laughs> that's appropriate. It's the shade Horoscope. Mm. Okay, not a lot of product comes out on that little dofa. We need to get her started here. I personally prefer a minty lip gloss if it's going to be plumping. Those little hot ones, like the old Too Faced one. That one turns my whole face red. <laughs> like I have this reaction to it that's like way outside of my actual lips. And this reminds me a lot of like the old Bath and Body Works, like the menthol, menthol lip balms. That was probably my first experience with something plumping my lips. And I was like, that. I want more of that. <laughs> so uh, we got drama. I'm a big, shiny, glittery disco ball happening right now. And I did use a little bit of the uh the veil powder like i said from hourglass to just kind of like dampen the shine down ever so slightly because that finishing spray that i love to use from anime does not mattify at all it makes things really really dewy and beautiful and so you can put a little bit of powder on top to kind of like take that down after the fact but i have had a lot of you guys asking me you're like i do like to wear a powder foundation can i still get like a dewy vibe yes <laughs> are my cheeks pink enough is the question Am I wearing enough blush? Is that the answer? I don't think that's the answer. The answer is something much pinker. Saint? You guys, y'all been on me about using this, about how I need to get more use out of it and try it again, so let's do it. If it doesn't work, I blame you. <laughs> Is it just me or was that just right? It might be imperceptible to you, but it completely capped off the look in my eyes. In typical khaki and queen of swatches fashion, my swatches are grade A top notch. So here are everything from the warm and here are everything from the original no bs so you can see here that these are not only warmer but they're actually a little bit more pigmented than the original matte and i think that the uh formula is super super similar if not exactly the same on the shimmers but i don't know i think that the new ones just feel a little bit creamier 
Um, but that's not to say that these aren't just absolutely gorgeous, these three from the original No BS palette. So I did swatch the, the matte and the, uh, the highlight shade. That's the cool tone matte, cool tone highlight, the warm tone matte, and the warm highlight but you can't see it at all. <laughs> and I think that that's actually like by design, they're not super, super pigmented, those big pan shades. And I think that that's really good because then you end up with something that can back you out of trouble without laying a whole bunch of pigment down. But the old one also doesn't follow that here's the tone, here's the kind of corresponding shimmer of that tone, uh, the way that the new one does, which is what makes it kind of also remind me of the Tati palette. But if you have been waiting for the warm tones to come around, guys, this is so, so beautiful. And you know, Jaclyn Hill has shown us all that light colored eyes can always benefit from colors like this that have a little bit of like a warmth to them because it kind of bounces off like a blue or a green. But I think personally, it looks fantastic with brown eyes. So my personal experience with PYT is that they reached out to me as a creator before they even launched for the first time. And they sent me the first round of stuff and I have kind of bought everything since then, I wanna say. And they've just always been so incredibly sweet. And they do make a point of trying to make clean beauty more accessible. If you've ever shopped clean beauty at the drugstore, like at Target or something like that, you know that it's still really expensive for the drugstore, but this palette is $32 and honestly, it kind of blows my mind. They just made a lot of really good edited choices. I really think that the lip gloss is beautiful too. I think that the blush is great, uh, but I do prefer the matte formula. They do carry this online at Ulta and uh, they also have it on Amazon, which is great. But also I wouldn't be surprised if someday I saw PYT on the shelves at Target, just because this is right within their clean beauty, slightly more affordable, but definitely like, super high quality, very high performing, but also user-friendly and beginner-friendly kind of makeup segment, like Target needs to get on this. So if I haven't apologized enough already, please understand how sorry I am for continuing to ignore this release until now, because this is so utterly beautiful and not to be slept on and not missable and not forgettable. And it's making me really happy. And also I'm glad, I'm sure that there are a lot of you are glad to just see me talk about makeup again. We've been decluttering my life since the beginning of the year and there will be more content like that. Don't worry. It definitely like is super calming content to make and to watch, but I do still love makeup and I want to keep talking about makeup on my channel. And this made me like, reignited, reinvigorated to talk about makeup. I do have some cool stuff coming up too. I ended up buying the new Physicians Formula Organic Wear. I ended up buying the CoverGirl uh, Fresh Clean, Clean Fresh. I also bought uh, Pretty Fresh, uh, the foundation and the concealer from ColourPop. So we've got a lot of affordable foundations that have pretty good ingredients uh, coming up on my channel. I really just wanna get some more accessible stuff out there for you guys, and this falls into that category as well. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you think that this is as beautiful as I do. Everything will be linked below. If you did enjoy this, guys, do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, guys, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today, guys. Just having a fun, play with makeup kind of day. I love you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.